वेलकम टू बाई बोलर जंक्शन ट्रांसिस्टर बीजेटी कोर्स ए ट्रांजिस्टर इज अ डिवाइस विच कैन बी यूज एज एन एम्पलीफायर और ए स्विच एंड ट्रांजिस्टर इज करंट कंट्रोलिंग डिवाइस दैट इज बीजेटी बाई पोलर जंक्शन ट्रांजिस्टर is a current current controlling device transistors can either of two types first one is npn the symbol is shown here and pnp the arrow direction in the npn transistor pnp transistor indicates conventional current direction or emitter current direction conventional emitter current direction come to the introduction of bjt the bjt has three terminals emitter base collector and two two junctions so bjt is a three terminal and two junction device so out of three layers emitter base collector the base is very lightly doped it's very thin compared to other two layers and the emitter is moderately doped sorry emitter is heavily doped collector is moderately doped so in npn transistor emitter and collector are made of n type semiconductors whereas base is p type in pnp transistor emitter and collector are p type base is n type so bjt is a three terminal device and two junctions one junction is emitter base junction second junction is collector to base junction so why the name the transistor bipolar junction transistor because in bjt the current is due to the uh, both electrons and holes in p type the majority carriers are holes and minority carriers are electrons whereas in n type the majority carriers are electrons and minority carriers are holes so here in bjt the current is flowing because of both charge carriers there is electrons and holes in diodes there is only one pn junction whereas in bjt three layers that is emitter base collector and two pn junction emitter to base junction collector to base junction so here it shown pnp and npn the arrow direction always from p to n like diode so these are the some of the transistor packages available in the market come to transistor operation for normal operation of the transistor one junction is forward bias that is emitter to base junction is forward bias and the second junction collector to base junction is reverse bias so normal operation means it is amplifier application so one junction is forward bias that is emitter to base junction is forward bias and collector to base junction is reverse bias so when emitter to base junction is forward bias means the depletion layer width is very small and collector to base junction is reverse bias means the depletion width is very wide so this is the normal operation since emitter to base junction is forward bias the depletion region is less compared to one bias and collector to base junction is reverse bias the depletion region width is more so this is npn transistor so when emitter to base junction is forward bias means the electrons from emitter region drift towards base region in the case of 
NPN transistor. Some free electrons combine with the holes in the base region to form the small base current. Since the base layer is very thin layer and lightly doped compared to collector. Inside the base region, the free electrons are minority carriers. Whereas in NPN transistor, since it is a base region is P type, so the free electrons are minority carriers. So most of these free electrons are swept away into collector region because of the collector to base junction is reverse bias. This reverse bias voltage helps to cross these minority carriers. So there are three currents we can identify in the BJT, emitter current, base current and collector current. So the relation between these three currents, whether it is NPN transistor or PNP transistor, for both transistors, the emitter current is equal to sum of base current plus collector current. So this is the current directions is given for NPN, IB the base current and collector current towards into transistor and emitter current or it goes emitter current leaves out of the transistor tunnel. Whereas in PNP the emitter current enters into the transistor whereas base current and collector current leaves from the transistor. So for both transistor the equation satisfies that is e, IE emitter current is equal to sum of collector current and base current. The collector current has two components uh, that is IC is equal to alpha DC IE plus IC B naught. Alpha DC is the fraction of charge carriers emitted from emitter that enter into the collector region and ICB naught is a reverse saturation current since the collector to base junction is reverse bias. So which is negligible. So the alpha DC, so if you neglect that, approx if you neglect ICB naught then approximate IC, approximate equation IC collector current is equals to alpha DC into IE. So the alpha DC is equals to I, IC by the ratio of collector current by emitter current. So this alpha DC is known as common base DC current gain. So the value of alpha DC is around 0.96 to 0.995 or 0.99. So approximately which is approximately 1. The other name of alpha DC is emitted to collector current gain. So I, we know that IC is equal to alpha DC IE plus IC B naught and IE the emitter current is equal to sum of base current and collector current. You substitute in the equation. So you will get IC is equal to alpha DC by 1 minus alpha DC into IB plus ICB naught by 1 minus alpha DC. So alpha DC by 1 minus alpha DC, I am giving the name beta DC. Similarly ICB naught by 1 minus alpha DC, which I am giving the name ICE naught. Where beta DC is the base to collector current gain. Since alpha DC is approximately is equals to 1, so IC naught is greater than IC B naught. If you take the approximation for the previous equation, IC is equals to beta DC into IB. So the beta DC is equals to base to collector current gain or common emitter DC current gain. So both these alpha DC and beta DC are temperature sensitive. Come to transistor configuration. So I already told the BJD has three terminals, emitter, base, collector. For two port applic applications, one of the terminal 
should common between the input and output so because of that three configurations are there common base configuration common emitter configuration common collector configuration come to common base configuration so here the base is common between input and output circuit so this is npn transistor so veb the emitter to base junction is forward bias and collector to base junction is reverse bias emitter and collector are n layers whereas base is p layer so this is the input characteristics common base input characteristics so the common base input characteristics is a plot versus ie versus emitter current versus veb for various values of vcb so how to plot these input characteristics practically so i am keeping vcp as constant so let us zero volts then change the veb at different levels at each level ie you record the ie uh, ie level so then plot it then change the vcb to 10 volts then veb different levels you change the different levels then record the ie level so then we can plot the ie versus veb so the ie versus veb characteristics is the common base input characteristics since the input junction is forward bias the characteristics is very similar to the forward bias diode characteristics so if you observe this characteristics as vcb is increase the ie is increases slightly this is because the larger the vcb since the collector to base junction is reverse bias the larger the vcb voltage which causes the depletion region at the common collector to base junction penetrates more into the base of the transistor so thus the distance between the depletion regions is very less thus reducing the resistance between the emitter base and collector to base depletion region if resistance is decreases the current is increases slightly so this is how to calculate the input resistance ri is equals to delta v by delta e with vcb is constant and voltage amplification factor delta vcb by delta veb with ie is constant come to common base output characteristics so the common base output characteristics is a plot of output voltage that is vcb versus output current that is ic for different values of input current ie so here we observed here three regions active region saturation region cutoff region so active region that is emitter to base junction one junction is forward bias and collector to base junction is reverse bias so the, this is generally normal operating operation of a normal operation of a transistor that is amplifier amplifier so cutoff region here both junctions are reverse bias so ideally the transistor is in off state so here ie is equals to 0 and ic is equals to icb not a reverse saturation current only flows come to saturation region here both junction there is emitter to base junction and collector to base junction both are forward bias so ideally the transistor into on state
So here, how to calculate output resistance from the output characteristics, common base output characteristics, that is delta VC by delta IC with keeping IE is constant. And current amplification factor, delta IC by delta E, output current by input current, keeping output voltage is constant. So come to common emitter configuration, second configuration. So here the emitter is common between input and output. So this is a circuit for determining the input characteristics and output characteristics. So common emitter input characteristics. So the plot of IB versus VBE, input voltage and input current. VBE is the input voltage and IB is the input current for various values of VCE. Since this, this junction is forward bias, so the characteristics is very similar to the forward bias diode characteristics. So here also same the VC, as VCE is increased, the IB decreases slightly. So common emitter output characteristics, a plot of output voltage that is VCE versus output current IC for various values of IB. The three regions uh, shown here, active region, cutoff region, saturation region. So active region I told. So one junction is forward bias that is emitter to base junction and collector to base junction is reverse bias. So IC is increases with IB. Since the relation between IC and IB is directly proportional that is IC is equals to beta IB. Cutoff region here both junctions are reverse bias. So the region below the IB is equals to zero line. And saturation region, here the both junctions are forward bias. So the VCE sat is equal to 0.3 volts for silicon. The collector to emitter saturation voltage is 0.3 volts. So input resistance, RI is equal to delta VBE by delta IB, keeping VCE is constant. And similarly, output resistance R0 is equal to delta VCE by delta IC. Keeping input current is constant. That is IB. And voltage gain, output voltage by input voltage, that is delta VCE by delta VB by keeping IB is constant. And current gain, beta AC, output current by input current, delta IC by delta IB by keeping VCE is constant. This is the experimental setup to determine the common emitter characteristics, that is input characteristics and output characteristics. Come to transistor biasing. Applying the external DC voltages to ensure that the transistor operates in the desired region. So what is the desired region? For ap amplifier application, the transistor operates in active region. For switching application, the transistor should operate either in cutoff region and saturation region. So Q set point or Q point or DC operating point. The point we get by plotting the DC values of IC, collector current that is IB, base current and VCE when AC input is zero. So we are considering only DC sources. So we have to, whatever AC input is there in the amplifier, we have to make it zero on the transistor characteristics. Then you will get Q point is in the middle of the active region. So the Q point is IC versus VCE. So types of biasing, fixed bias, 
cell bias. So this is the fixed bias circuit. So the emitter is directly connected, the emitter terminal is directly connected to ground. So the base current, we can calculate base current IB is equals to VCC minus VBE by RB and VCE is equals to VCC minus ICRC. VCC is the total voltage, VCC minus ICRC gives the VCE voltage. So it is simple circuit and we use uses very few resistors. But disadvantage of this fixed bias circuit is Q point is unstable. Since if temperature is increases, then beta is increases, since beta is temperature sensitive. And hence the ICEQ and VC, ICQ and VCEQ vary. Both are dependent on the beta. So if temperature is increases, the Q point is shifted. Q point also changes. If the transistor is replaced with another transistor with having different beta value, then, then also the Q point shifts. So these are the disadvantages of the fixed bias circuit. The load line characteristics. Characteristics shown for common emitter configuration. The output voltage is VC and in output current is IC. So the other, de other definition of Q point is the intersection of the output characteristics and the load line also Q point. For common emitter configuration, if you vary the input resistance, that is RB is varied, then Q point is changes. If you vary RC, Q point is changes. If you vary VCC also the Q point is changes. So this is the load line equation. VC is equals to VCC minus ICRC for fixed bias circuit. Come to self bias or voltage divider bias. So here RE is connected between emitter and ground and R1 and R2 are the potential divider resistances or voltage divider resistors. So here two methods are there. One is exact method and approximate, approximation, uh, approximate analysis. So in exact method we are using Thevenin's theorem. In approximation analysis we are neglecting the base current. IB is approximately is equal to zero. We are taking that as approximations. So this is the exact analysis. So we are applying the Thevenin's theorem in the input circuit. So we are finding V Thevenin's and R Thevenin's. So V Thevenin's is the voltage across R2, that is VCC into R2 by R1 plus R2. Similarly, R Thevenin's to find out R Thevenin's, whatever the sources, voltage sources are there, you have to make it short. So figure C to calculate the R Thevenin's, R Thevenin's is equal to R1 parallel with the R2. Then this is the reduced circuit of voltage divider bias circuit. So then now you can calculate easily IB. IB is equals to V Thevenin's minus VBE by R Thevenin's plus beta plus 1 into RE. Similarly, the output equation VC output voltage VC is equals to VCC minus IC RC minus IE RE. So here the IC is almost independent of beta, so the Q point is stable, the operating point is stable. In the approximate equation that is IC is equals to V Thevenin's minus VBE by RE. So in this approximation equation, the IC is almost independent of beta. So the operating point is stable. 
so this is approximate analysis so the approximate is analysis we can carry by checking the condition that is beta r e greater than or equals to 10 times r2 if this condition is satisfied we can proceed with the approximate analysis so these are the formulas for approximate analysis vb that is base voltage vcc into r2 by r1 plus r2 and emitter current vb minus vbe by rb so here also same the ic and vce is independent of beta so the q point is stable for the approximate analysis thank you